okay so good morning everyone so last class we saw uh, that with five branching programs are sufficient to capture all of nc1 okay. and uh, as i said like this was something that was not believed in fact it was conjectured that a function like majority could not be solved by with five branching programs and it's easy to see that majority is in nc1 so proving this by proving this result barrington kind of refuted this conjecture okay so now the question arises what about uh, smaller with branching programs okay whatever uh, what about uh, if we come below down to with four or with three branching programs what kind of uh, circuit classes do they capture is there any equivalence result uh, corresponding to with four or with three branching program and some other circuit class okay so that is what we are going to explore and uh, see today so we are going to see that uh, so for with four branching programs no such uh, nice characterization is known but for with three branching program there is another nice characterization of uh, uh, in fact bounded depth circuits so that is what we are going to see so and this result was also due to barrington okay so barrington after his uh, result of showing with five branching programs are equivalent to NC1, he came up with this uh, second result. So, we are going to focus on with three branching programs okay and like last time we are going to look at this uh, instruction model of looking at a branching program okay so we saw that how if we have a sequence of instructions how we can convert it into a branching program of uh, the same length so we'll uh, a set of instructions over S5 basically corresponds to a branching program of width 5. Okay, so we are going to look at set of instructions over S3 instead. Okay, so before uh, getting into the result, I will define a type of circuit. So, a mod 3 dot mod 2 circuit is a depth 2 circuit having a mod 3 gate as output and mod 2 gates in the second level ok and uh, we denote the size of such circuits to be the number of mod 2 gates ok. So, essentially it looks like this. So, we have a mod 3 gate and uh, there are several mod 2 gates that feed into it and uh, this is the input ok. This is the output 
So, the inputs can have either variables x 1 through x n or it can have constants 0 or 1. Okay. So, this is what is called a well and or gate can be simulated by a mod 2 gate. Okay. So, I mean this is how it is defined mod 3 or mod 2. So, Uh, yeah, so by definition it does not have any other type of gates and or not nothing. So, this is what the thing. So, the result is that we are going to see today is the following. So, this was also in 86 if I am correct that Let L be a language. So, L is accepted by a family of um, let's take this. <coughs> A family of programs over S three of polynomial length if and only if L is accepted. by a family of mod 3, mod 2 circuits. Okay. So, this is what we will see. So, as I said once again that uh, we look at the model where we consider the branching program to be a sequence of instructions over S 3. Okay. So, each permutation is a permutation over S3 and uh, the number of instructions is polynomial in the number of inputs. Okay. So, couple of lemmas before uh, we get to the theorem. So, first a simple fact. Okay. So, if you look at these two permutations, so S3 is a that uh, I mean the symmetric group of order 3 and it consists of 6 elements and uh, if you look at these 2 elements. So, g equal to uh, square okay, 1, 2, 3 and h equal to 1, 2, 3. So, this notation means that, so this is the cyclic group of order 3, 1 is mapped to 2, 2 is mapped to 3 and 3 is mapped to 1 and this is the transposition which is mapping 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 is mapped to itself. Okay. So, what can we say about these two? So, G and H, generates S 3. In other words, any element in S 3 can be written as a product of uh, G and H. Okay. So, now, why are these two, why have we chosen? So, we can actually say something that is similar to what we said last time. So, if we look at the commutator, okay. so if we consider the commutator H G H inverse G inverse. So, this turns out to be I think G right yeah G. Once again it is very easy to check. So, if I take 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, what is H inverse? Hmm? It is H itself actually, okay, because 1 is mapped to 2 and here again 2 is getting mapped to 1. So, 
it is its own inverse and g inverse is basically 3 to 1. So, if you actually solve this, this comes out to be 1, 2, 3 once again. Okay, so very standard. So, let me call this as theorem 1, call this lemma 2 and I will use a lemma 3. Okay, so this lemma is, uh, it is saying uh, something about the output of a mod 3 mod 2 circuit. So, let uh, okay. let us see be a mod 3 mod 2 circuit of size s, then there exist a mod 3 mod 2 circuit C prime of size order S square such that uh, for all x C prime of x. congruent to 0 or 1 modulo 3 ok. So, just a point that needs to be mentioned here. So, in general ok, if I look at a circuit, if I look at a mod 3 dot mod 2 circuit in general, the output of this circuit can be 0, 1 or 2 right. So, depending on the number of 1s that come into mod 3, if it is divisible by I mean whatever is the remainder of that number when divided by 3 is the output of this circuit right. Well, so, ok. So, uh, let me put it this way. Well, ok. So, mod 3 gate uh, need not be defined that way. So, in general, so mod 3 gate is defined. So, if it is divisible by 3, it is 0. If it is, if it is not divisible, it is uh, 1. So, that is one way to define it. So, then maybe I should state this a little differently then. Uh, such that for all x the number of ones that or the number of mod 2 gates that evaluate to 1 is congruent to 0 or 1 modulo 3 ok. So, essentially what we are saying is that the number of 1s that I have over here is only congruent to 0 or 1 mod 3, it will not be congruent to 2 mod 3 ok. And that we can achieve by constructing a circuit C prime whose size is at most quadratic in the size of the original circuit ok. So, this proof uh, just uses some number theoretic uh, idea essentially Fermat's little theorem. So, let P1 up to Cs be the <coughs> mod
two gates of C. Okay, so each CI. So we can write each CI as. So I can write it as C i of x as two to the power a i one x one plus a i n x n plus C i uh, minus one mod three. Minus one mod three. So, what are these a i's? So, where a i j is equal to 1 if x j is an input to c i and it is 0 otherwise okay so essentially this is kind of counting uh, so if i just look at this sum and c okay so i should also say ci so ci is equal to the number of ones into capital ci Okay. So essentially, what this power is count counting is the uh, number of ones that feed to the gate CI. Okay. So if a variable is feeding to that gate, then it is kept over here using this constant. And if a variable is not feeding to that gate, then it is turned off by setting that constant to be 0. Okay, so it is essentially counting the parity. Uh, well, not the parity, but essentially the sum. Now, what is this? Uh, what, what does this turn out to be? So, if you look at any odd power of two, okay, and you subtract one from it, what do you get? So, if you take an odd power of two and you subtract one from it, you get basically uh, a number which is congruent to one mod three. Okay, for example. Uh, 8 minus 1, 7 is congruent to 1 mod 3, uh, 32 minus 1 is 31 is congruent to 1 mod 3, then next is 120, 7 is again congruent to 1 mod 3 and so on. Okay. And uh, if you look at any even power of 2 and you subtract 1 from it, it is congruent to 0 mod 3. Okay. So, this is again very simple, uh, I mean you can prove it very simply, but essentially that is why we get this equivalence. Now, what we do is we apply Fermat's little theorem on this. So, by Fermat's little theorem, okay. So, <coughs> I need it. So, even, even before we get to Fermat's little theorem, let me just uh, talk about uh, the entire sum now. Let us just look at c of x. So, what is c of x? It is basically I just count, I mean I just add up all these c i of x mod 3. So, that will be sigma i 2 to the power a i 1 x 1 up to a i n x n uh, 
minus s so s is the number of mod 2 gates so minus s mod 3 okay so by fermat's little theorem what we have is we can write c of x as equal to the square of this mod 3 okay or c of x is congruent to sigma 2 to the power a i 1 x 1 a i n x n minus s whole square mod 3 and uh, right so yeah i mean basically this follows because uh, if well put this note over here so Fermat's little theorem so if a is not divisible by a prime p then a raised to the power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p and of course, if A is divisible by P, then A raised to the power P minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod P. Okay. So, this is the first statement is essentially Fermat's little theorem. The second, of course, follows trivially, and uh, that is what we are using over here. Okay. So, P for us is equal to 3. Okay. So, now we are taking, so this term is a for us. So, a square is congruent to 1 mod p. Okay. So, that is what we are using over here. And if a is not divisible by p, so that is if a is either 1 or 2, then we have that a raised to the power 2 is congruent to 1 mod p. And if it is divisible by p, which means that it is 0, then it remains 0. So, now once we have this, how do we get a circuit? So, essentially we can now expand the terms in the above equation and build a so essentially i will just look at this term and i just expand it out okay so i will get several terms over here in fact i will get order s square many terms okay and uh, because this is uh, sum over s so i going from 1 up to s so i get order s square many terms over here and i just build a mod 3 mod 2 circuit consisting of order s square mod 2 gates okay so this is all the uh, toolkit that we need to prove our theorem now okay so now
proving the theorem. So, we will start with the reverse direction that is given a mod 3 mod 2 circuit, how do we get a sequence of instructions that accept the same language. So, let P be a mod 3 mod 2 circuit. So, first uh, how do I represent a mod 2 gate? I mean how do I represent a mod 2 gate as a branching program or as a program over S3. So, what is the just think about it for a moment. So, what is the obvious way to do it? So, what do I want over here? What I want is that if the number of ones coming into that gate is odd then it should be odd and if the number of ones is even then it should be uh, 0. Huh? So, I want a sequence of instructions over S3, right. So, what kind of instruction and these instructions will be permutations uh, over S3, okay. So, suppose if I have a variable, okay. So, let hmm? So, if it is 1 then I flip it somehow, right. So, what is the permutation that corresponds to a flip? It is basically the permutation h, okay. It is basically the transposition, okay. So, if it is a 1 then I will apply h and if it is 0 then I apply identity, right. Now, I just count. So, if the number of 1s is even then basically h to the power and even number is identity and if the number of 1s is odd then h to the power and odd number is h, okay. So, it is it basically h recognizes this instruction. So, that is essentially the idea. So, okay. so for a mod 2 gate, okay, say g if x i is an let me not use g over here because g is, is used in a different context. Uh, actually, I do not need any notation for this right now. So, for a mod 2 gate, if x i is an input to the gate. then add the instruction uh, okay let me do it a little differently slightly okay, write it as a table <coughs> If I have x i as an input, then I will add the instruction i h e and if let us say a constant 1 is an input, then what should I add? So, what does 1 do to a mod 2 gate? Huh? It flips the value that is computed so far, right. So, what should I do? Huh? It should be h in both cases. So, whatever it is, it should get flipped and 0 it is identity identity, it does not matter. I mean, we can just keep it for the sake of completeness, it does not change the gate, okay. So, this is how we handle a mod 2 gate. Now, the point is that, uh, so for a mod 2 gate, I have a program. Uh, 
so so hence we get a program that h computes a mod to get right so now what we will do is that i want to uh, say that uh, I, I mean i want to get a program that would also g compute a mod to get how can i do that so now i will apply lemma 2 okay so huh what what is the number of mod 3 so the number of mod 3 gate is 1 there is only one mod 3 gate and the number of mod 2 gates is polynomial so s is polynomial in the number of inputs okay huh well yeah it is not uh, okay maybe i can just write it over here by a family of mod 3 mod 2 circuits of polynomial size yeah so so you are right so yeah if you don't mention it it can be more as well but yeah so we take it as polynomial 